because I'm eating junk and watching rubbish. You better come out and stop me. Yay! Ho, 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 assholes. <laughs> yippee ki motherfuckers. It's that time of year again. The holiday season. So throw up your tinsel and nog your eggs, man. It's about to go down half-glass gaming style. Boom! I'm, of course, Jolly Julian Watkins. And over here we have, well, Mistletoe Mandy. Hey! And uh, Jingle Ball Josh. <laughs> Yeah, yep. <laughs> that one you agree to. <laughs> Everything else is just Josh, but Jingle Ball Josh, that you're totally down with. <laughs> I wasn't having the helicopter, so j- Jingle Balls is all right. Yeah. I got no R's, though. Reindeer Rudolph. There you go. Boom. <laughs> just saying. Yes. Reindeer Rudolph Reverend. <laughs> Reindeer Rudolph Red Nosed Reverend. <laughs> well, I do drink a lot. <laughs> yeah. So it's. Uh, Mandy, what's up with you? Uh, I mean, the holidays are sort of a time where I wind up doing some traveling. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was in Michigan, and I realized that, I don't know if you guys remember those stupid McDonald's billboards that I talked about a while back on the podcast. Treats. Those are, those are regional, and every state has their own stupid McDonald's <laughs> billboards. And in Michigan, they use the MI for Michigan for me or my, so there'll be like a billboard with a big cup of coffee, then it'll say, am I coffee? <laughs> <laughs> like somebody worked out stupid catchphrase billboards that make no sense for 50 states, presumably, wow. and McDonald's. They're well, all I think they have. So I think bad. they all have their own regional social media teams. And they're all bad. <laughs> right, because <laughs> the, the, the Minneapolis, like, or the Minnesota social media team was like talking with people about the treats excited billboards and they're like we were so excited about our treats that we created a new catchphrase (laughs) (laughs) i mean to be fair i feel like you and i say treats excited on a new daily basis now (laughs) (laughs) yeah mission accomplished (laughs) right It's permeated the podcast, and now it's just going to be a part of uh, the zeitgeist of the the universe. Podcast excited. I, I've yeah. actually read that um, the way advertising works these days, they've gotten really good at like getting people to remember the ridiculous phrases or whatever, but they've stopped mm-hmm. being able to get people to like to make that into purchases. Hmm. I mean, treats excited certainly doesn't trigger my my buying frenzy. All day no. breakfast does. All day, yeah, all day breakfast kind of does. But I mean, is that a treat? No. Depends on how you feel about eggs. No, but but if they're if they're if their billboard was like all day breakfast serving now, like that that yeah. would have pulled but me. But what if it was all day breakfast excited? <laughs> <laughs> all day breakfast excited. <laughs> See, that is, killing I, it, Julian. We're all over the place. I feel like that's the thing. Like, they focus so hard on making memorable stuff or viral stuff that they've forgotten, oh, yeah, if we don't give people a reason to buy our shit, they're not going to buy our shit. I think that's the hilarious part is that everybody's trying to create this viral thing. But it's like anything that traditionally went viral was just like, oops. <laughs> right. <laughs> And now it's super popular. It's not like, hey, let's make this guy do that. And Treat's excited and I'm over here. And And nine times out of ten, it was viral because people just didn't understand what the fuck was going on. Gangnam Style, for Mm -hmm. example. Like, people sat there and tried to parody it, except it was already a joke song. It was supposed to be ridiculous. Mm -hmm. These people weren't parodying Psy. They were stealing his bit. Mm -hmm. Or it's like that Chocolate Rain kid. Tay Sunday. Yeah, I mean, that was just some He he played for Sav. Well, he did, what was that, uh, raspberry chocolate Dr. Pepper or something? It is Super Bowl commercial, <laughs> Cherry Chocolate Rain. There you go, right. So I, like, I know the lyrics to Cherry Chocolate Rain, I am ashamed and, uh, to admit. And now, but... with the rendition of Cherry Chocolate <laughs> no. Rain. No. Uh... Didn't you see him live somewhere? No, I've never seen Tay Zunday oh. live. Mm. I've seen Wesley Willis live. Maybe that's what you're thinking of. Mm. As a Christmas gift to myself, I actually just purchased a Super Nintendo. Oh. I, I actually still have my childhood Super Nintendo, which my mother got for me when I was like 12, and it still works. I'm impressed. Mm. I've never owned a Super Nintendo. Oh, yeah. you were a Genesis kid. I was a Genesis Genesis kid, and this this will be my first Super Nintendo. I bought it off a guy off Reddit. <laughs> 
Oh, so that's interesting. I'm uh, waiting to see if it actually shows up, mm-hmm. <laughs> but he sent a tracking number mm-hmm. and, you know, maybe it'll show up and it'll just be like an empty Super NES shell or something. <laughs> but I mean, I've got a tracking number and I'm I'm feeling positive about yeah. this. Too bad you can't get Harvest Moon. I was looking at getting Harvest Moon. It, that, that cartridge is worth like $300. I have the Earthbound cartridge, which like by itself, not mint in the box, not with the instruction, is worth like $200. Yeah. In the press. Which, by the way, I've got Secret of Mana, I've got Final Fantasy III, I've got Earthbound, and I've got Super Mario RPG. So if you want to borrow any of those when your SNES gets here, let me no, I'll let you. That's a very, very valuable cartridge collection. Yeah, I actually looked that up, and like, if I decided to sell just those four, I'd get like five hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. No, my my Dreamcast collection is crazy valuable. I, I've also got a French version of Link to the Past, mm-hmm. which works on the American SNES. I'm thinking about smelting some gold and dipping a copy of The Witcher 3 in it, then I have a gold <laughs> copy of The Witcher 3. It, it's like the the gold cartridges they came out for, with for the N64. Yeah, except this would be completely unplayable. It, right. Oh, so you know what? I had a holiday party at work. That was super ridiculous. I normally don't like to fraternize with people that I work with, but, uh, you know, free beer. What are you going to do, right? No, that makes sense. I will do a lot of really obnoxious things for free beer. Mm-hmm. So I'm at the party. <clears throat> Everybody that works there is like a traditional Minnesotan, it seems like. Hunting and, you know, ludificish. <laughs> Ludificing. Ludifis. You know, all sorts <laughs> of curling and shit. It blows their mind. They're unable to wrap their, their head around the concept of me just not eating meat. So it's like everybody's deep frying turkeys. They got meatballs. And every other joke out of every other person's mouth is just some, like, lame comment on vegetarianism and... I don't know how you could do it. The turkey's so good. You know, it's like, eh, chill the fuck out. It's so weird. Like, people are just fascinated by it, and they don't even ask interesting questions. It's just like, yeah. what do you eat? It's like, it's food <laughs> on my plate. One guy brought in, like, a wild rice salad thing. He's like, oh, I added the chicken after I made the salad, so you can just pick that out. And <laughs> there won't be any, that much chicken juice in there. I was like, what? No, and of course, all the people who think you eat chicken. Yeah, right. Vegetarians <clears throat> eat chicken, right? Well, and it's funny because somebody brought a vegetable platter and nobody ate it. Not even you? Not even me. I just stand, stood there watching to see if anybody was going to it. My daughter is vegetarian, Mm -hmm. and um, what's funny is after she became a vegetarian, she actually added more variety to her diet than before. Because, you know, before she became a vegetarian, she was a really picky eater. Mm -hmm. Uh, But then when she decided to be a vegetarian, you know, her mother was like, well, that's fine, but you need certain kinds of nutrition, and I don't know how to make that happen for you. So you're going to have to figure out what I can cook that you can eat that will get you the nutrition that you need. Mm -hmm. And she did. She found cookbooks. She, you know, did found recipes online and... You know, her diet actually had more variety in it after she decided to stop eating meat than it ever did before. Yeah. I don't eat meat, but I do dabble in cannibalism. Well, that's reasonable. (laughs) What a a Fallout 4 thing to say. Yeah. (laughs) Speaking Speaking of Fallout Fallout 4. (laughs) (laughs) Well, speaking of Fallout 4, uh, right after Thanksgiving when I loaded up the game, I went into Diamond City and there were Christmas decorations like everywhere and i mean this is like immediately the friday after so i was actually a little bit annoyed so i went and jumped around until finally i figured out how to climb on top of a building and then i used my cool new flame sword to attack a christmas tree but <laughs> it didn't do anything because life is terrible yeah but uh that is terrible if they're going to add christmas stuff that soon they should let you destroy that christmas stuff well, well it's based on the the in-game Timer. It was just a coincidence that mm-hmm. I got it immediately after Thanksgiving. But uh, I guess they have a decent amount of holiday content in there, mm. but it's really hard to see because you have to be in Diamond City on the mm-hmm. right day of the mm-hmm. year, basically. Yeah, I think it was December 25th that they put up the decorations. And, and I think I heard there were there's Halloween stuff too, but I never saw it. Well, yeah. there's Halloween stuff when you start, and a lot of people thought it was just because the bombs fell right before Halloween. I do see posters still, though, for, like... Yeah, there's, like, plastic pumpkins and, like, yeah. there's a bunch of Halloween stuff up. 
Yeah. See, I scrapped all those pumpkins ages ago. Yeah, actually, there's a preparatory school that you can go to that's a raider hideout. They have decorations up on the wall and everything. So in the it, middle school, that there's a vault in the basement, too. Yeah, so it must have... When, when did the... October? It was in October when the bomb drops. You know, I never really paid much attention to in-game dates or times. Like, I don't know what the hell they're talking about in The Witcher when they're talking about months and shit. It's like, it's the year of the do- day of the white dog of the... What? What is it? November? What are we talking about here? But it'd be interesting to see in Fallout if you can just continually play the game, how long you could progress through time. I mean, I know you can, like, go more than a year without doing anything to further the story. So, like, but I mean, like, could you spend enough time just letting the time in the game pass that in game time there'd be like 25 years go by almost certainly uh, i would endless? presume that it would let you do that i don't i don't know if it would have any effect on anything but mm-hmm. i presume it would let you do that mm-hmm. i mean how how many years have you gone through in skyrim or don't you know i i don't know in large part because i never play on one save file long enough to go more than a few months well speaking of holidays and games i think this would be a suitable time to call a break I'm going to break us off a piece of that Kit Kat bar. You have Kit Kat bars? I'm not going to divulge that information until the time comes for me to put Kit Kat bars in your mouth. And I'm not going to lie, I'm kind of hoping that's a euphemism. It's sort of. <laughs> it's semi. It's semi-hard. I mean, a semi-euphemism. <laughs> uh, anyways, I'd like to uh, thank... Uh, if it's only semi-hard, someone's doing something wrong. <laughs> I'd like to thank uh, 2XAA and Wheelie for the music. Also, uh, Retrovolve.com. Um, feel free to check it out. Read some articles. Obviously, we're on there, and that's a good enough reason to go. But uh, there's also some pretty solid content. Of course, you know, HalfGlassGaming.com. Uh, you can find us on iTunes, Stitcher Radio. Uh, we're working on a smoke signal thing. That's coming probably next year. We're going to have an app for that. Um, so check it out. We're going to be back and we're going to be talking about holiday stuff and it's going to take place within video games. God bless America. Merry Christmas. Okay, so we're back from the break. Let's get down to uh, talking about some games and some holiday themes. How's that sound? I like that idea. Everybody climb on my lap. It's Santa time. I guess when you think about it, there are probably a lot more video games that have like holiday themes within them than maybe you would originally assume. Well, what I notice is that there's a lot of games that will have a holiday schedule. Mm-hmm. But there are much fewer games that actually deal with the changing of seasons. Mm -hmm. When you're dealing with seasons, it's like it's a complete change in foliage Mm -hmm. and, you know, winter is going to have snow. And so the entire environment has to change. Right. Whereas when it's just like, you know, people are putting up Christmas lights, it's just it's it's a much easier change to implement. Mm -hmm. However, there are, you know, several video games that do have changing seasons. And I have been having my my winter crud Mm -hmm. and so i've been staying home and playing a lot of cutesy video games lately and i played a bunch of rune factory tides of destiny oh yeah i've never heard of that which is a give it to josh yeah mandy gave it to me and it's how does that work The, the rune factory series is basically it's fantasy well they actually started out with innocent life which is sci-fi harvest moon and then they oh, sure, and yeah. that didn't catch on and mm-hmm. then they made rune factory which is fantasy harvest mm-hmm. moon which is really rune ha- factory, rune factory okay. r-u-n-e but uh it's <laughs> basically just harvest moon with like fairies and dungeons and combat but still farming. What is it on? I mean, there's a whole series. It's yeah. It started on the DS. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are games on the. There's a game on the 3DS. There are two on the Wii, and then there's this one on the PS3, which is the mm. one Josh is playing. Does, does the 3DS one also have the fairies and the dungeons and stuff? Yeah, they all do. Okay, because see, I'm not really interested in in Harvest Moon in and of itself, because it just I don't know. It just doesn't appeal to me. But you add fairies and dungeons, and suddenly I'm all over a fucking farming simulator. Mm-hmm. 
just like Harvest Moon has the you know one one month long seasons, yeah. uh, Rune Factory has that same thing. Although this one is set on like a kind of tropical island, mm-hmm. and very early in the game you get this giant rock golem that's like 30 stories high and you ride around in the ocean on him and then you discover new islands. Mm -hmm. And so eventually you have to discover islands where you can grow your crops. There's dungeon crawling. There's there's some temples and stuff you've got to go through and clear out. And I got way more addicted to it than I thought I would. And I mean, it has, it has so much of the harvest moon elements. Like, relationship mechanics and the the changing seasons and the festivals and Mm -hmm. all that i can't think of a game that has season changes that that's not part of the gameplay shenmue shenmue has seasons and weather patterns based on the actual weather patterns in japan in 1986 when the game is set so they went and got that data and then it's semi-randomized weather based on the data they had about weather predictions Mm -hmm. that they dug up from the 80s Mm -hmm. okay but other than shenmue which does fucking everything and therefore is not worthwhile as a comparison Mm -hmm. (laughs) um i feel like like you know there's don't starve uh there's the harvest moon games and games like it and like you find find weather patterns in far more games than you find actual season changes. Mm -hmm. You know, like Minecraft has all sorts of weather patterns, but doesn't really have season changes. Mm -hmm. It Uh, has, like, like different biomes. Biomes. Right. Yeah, same thing with, like, Skyrim. Right. Skyrim, like, has different areas with weather patterns and, like, you know, the area around Riften has more of a autumnish feel mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. then you go up to Windhelm and it's snowy and blizzardy mm-hmm. half the time but it doesn't have season changes i think it's difficult to program snow in a realistic way that it i mean it accumulates right i've only noticed like in games like madden uh when it starts to snow that it actually starts to build up um and affect like the terrain right um and hitman 2 actually there was a, a snow level where it was snowing and i didn't realize that this at the time when i was playing and i left the sniper rifle down because I, I ran out of bullets and then i got bullets and i went back to go get it and i couldn't find it because it was covered in snow <laughs> nice. that's actually pretty clever yeah i was it's, like fuck that's, <laughs> yeah that's that's great kind of impressive yeah i mean the original metal gear solid had in the beginning area it was snowing and that would like cover up your tracks mm-hmm. and so you would like leave tracks in the snow to like lure guards away mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then you could see this, the tracks getting covered up in the snow. Yeah, Grand Theft Auto Online, during the holidays, they add snow. But basically, it's just like a coat of white paint on the roads, and uh, it kind of snows a little bit. But it's not really snow. It doesn't I, affect your vehicle I had uh, a friend who had never seen snow, and he thought he had missed the snow in GTA Online, and he was so upset. And then he got – and he was so excited. And I mean – I've played a little GTA online, but I've never actually seen the snow. But mm-hmm. from what I've seen, it doesn't seem that impressive. But it's to him, it was the most amazing thing in video games. So I, having, yeah. having grown up in Texas and now moved up to Minnesota, I find it really entertaining how when you don't have any experience with snow, it's like this magical, wonderful thing. Mm-hmm. And then give it a year. And you're fucking tired of the fluffy white bullshit. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, when I was a kid, my family was driving through the Rockies, and there was a little bit of snow as you got kind of higher up, you know, higher elevation. And there were all these cars on the side of the road, like kids playing. It was like a half inch of snow. And all these kids (laughs) were like so excited to be playing in the snow for the first time. And and we're just like, ah, hey, let's get get through this crap. No, I didn't even like snow when I was a kid. (laughs) Yeah, six inches of snow can shut down Atlanta. Where I grew up, uh, down in um, southeastern Texas, when it iced over, that was enough to shut down the town. Mm -hmm. And granted, I grew up in a very small town. There was under 5,000 people, but iced over, nothing. Mm -hmm. Up here, two feet of snow, eh, business as usual. (laughs) Yeah. I like uh, when it snows um, in Bully. Uh, You can make, like, snowballs and... uh, I think Bully, you know, that's one thing. There's a clear-cut break um, between the chapters, so it doesn't naturally transition winter yeah. from autumn. But the way that they separate the seasons, I think, is handled incredibly well. Yeah. It feels like fall and then Halloween and 
You know, you're running around doing pranks on Halloween night. And yeah. The only time you can collect certain collectibles. And <laughs> There's an achievement for Snow Owl Fighting 2 in the newer version of Bully. Mm. That actually makes me think of The Last of Us, which... I, I was going to say, that's the one game that I bet we'll all forget about. <laughs> yeah, right, but I remembered it. Uh, like, the, the skipping around in the narrative bugs me. But the fact that they pay attention to, oh, well, this is four months later, so the seasons would have changed. Like, that that does help a lot, and it, it makes it feel like time has passed. Because, mm-hmm. you know, it was autumn, so, you know, it was clear skies, and now it's winter. And so, you know, there's snow everywhere, and Ellie's trying to track down a deer in the snow and mm-hmm. following the tracks. And so it was, that was really well done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you wound it at first, and then you kind of follow the blood trail. To- uh-huh. That was kind of annoying. I don't like that part. <laughs> See, I didn't mind that part. Yeah. <laughs> I, actually, I actually really liked it. Like, yeah, that because... Was- it completely changed the pace of the game, but mm-hmm. I kind of I kind of like when games have really intense moments, but also have like lulls. It allows you to, um, you know, have a little time to process what just happened mm-hmm. and to also like contrast this. Because if it's if it's all action all the time, it starts getting boring. Mm-hmm. But it's like you no, know, this this really crazy action scene happened in spite of you know the serenity of this next scene. Mm-hmm. And, well, yeah, like The Last of Us did that so well. I mean, the reason I've been thinking about that is because I've been playing Yakuza Five a mm-hmm. little bit, and it's so much about like, okay, go out and get drinks with your boss, and like you know, walk around town and buy gifts for girls mm-hmm. and, and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden it's like you're just walking down the street and they're like, hey, hey, get over here, man. And then you, you like pick up a bike and start beating on people. It's like, <laughs> yeah. it's so great. Oh, yeah. Yakuza is the best. Speaking of which, have either of you or you even seen the Yakuza movie? No. no. Oh, it's so great. I've seen the Yakuza Zero trailer. It is. I haven't seen that yet. It looks, it's super good. Mm. Tokyo in the 80s, man. Awesome. Which, that's the place where Skyrim really fails. All the... Taking place in the 80s? It, it, it totally <laughs> failed taking place in the 80s. Um, no, the, uh, the, like, in Skyrim, everything focuses on you're going to kill some dudes. Mm-hmm. You know, like, even if there's some talky bits, the talky bits don't matter. You know, you pick whatever dialogue option and nobody gives a shit. Yeah, I, I think, like, Bethesda games that I've played, you're always the outsider. Right. You can be around these things and sometimes even interact with them, but it's never like, yeah, you're hanging out. Even with your companions in Fallout, it's like you can talk to them and learn more about them. But Yeah, I I've, I've, haven't played Fallout 4, obviously, but definitely in Skyrim and mm-hmm. in the Fallout games I have played, like, you know, it just none of the social interaction matters, mm-hmm. and that always makes me sad because there's so much you can do with that, and they don't. Why doesn't it snow in Fallout 4? The weather is pretty screwed up. Well, but I mean, it's blue skies, it's cloudy, it rains. It's they're, they're, Massachusetts. You know, radiation storms. Yeah, but so, like, how does that affect snow? I don't what? know, but I, don't I feel either. like... Let's wondering. pause the podcast and do some study <laughs> on how radiation affects the season. Well, it's not about <laughs> realism, though, in Fallout. Mm-hmm. The whole gimmick for Fallout is they looked at what people in the 1950s thought the world would be, and right. the future would be like, and what, you know, nuclear war would be like. And so it's based on a weird 50s perception. Yeah, it just feels right. like, the in the Fallout 4 specifically, that the world is less irradiated or damaged as in previous games. Right. So it just kind of seems like, yeah, it's Massachusetts, December, you know, where's the snow? But uh, I mean, if we're, we're talking about global warming already, probably mm-hmm. in, what is it, 2077? Um, even beyond. 2277? 2277, you're right. Yeah. In 2277. I'm thinking of when the game starts, mm-hmm. when the bombs dropped is 2077. Mm-hmm. And so you're playing 200 years later. Yeah, so that's true. in 2277, I mean, there might not be snow anywhere at all. That's true. The world is not in good shape. That's true. I will say the first game that I think I had played that I, I am aware of that had like um, seasonal bonuses for times of year based on the PS2's internal clock was uh, Simpsons Hit and Run. Oh, really? Oddly enough. Yeah, it was like a dumb <clears throat> Simpsons racing game, but they had Halloween in there. I'm pretty sure they had Christmas can't remember if there were any other ones, but it was just like, what? <laughs> a Simpsons racing game? I find my uh, favorite thing having to do with holidays and seasonal changes is um, seeing 
each game's take on holidays. Hmm. And one of my favorite things on the the takes on different holidays is a browser, a, a dumb, silly little browser game called Kingdom of Loathing. You know, it's stick figure drawings. It's it's simple as all get out. Uh, but because it's a you know a, a constantly updated and developed game, uh, they do have uh, seasonal and holiday events. Like mm-hmm. right now, they're going through Crimbo, which is their you know their Christmas thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, they give everybody a Crimbo Advent calendar. Mm-hmm. You can, you know, it's just an advent calendar, but it's it's really silly to see the different ridiculous stuff they do, you mm-hmm. know? My favorite holiday in a video game to this day is Lord of the Rings Online has gives you the option of celebrating Bilbo Baggins' birthday. <laughs> and Bilbo and Frodo have the same birthday in the Lord of the Rings lore. <laughs> and so you can, you know, wish both of them a happy birthday. And mm-hmm. I don't remember the exact date. It's in September. Mm-hmm. Holiday celebrations are really an MMO staple. And mm-hmm. they have been for as long as I've been playing MMOs, which mm-hmm. is really since the 90s. But uh, Final Fantasy XI had internationally shared service, which is really unusual for an MMO. Most of Japanese players and European players and American players were all playing together. Mm. So they did every country's seasons. Mm-hmm. So you'd get American holidays and Japanese holidays and European holidays. And it was really cool and fun. That is they cool. did that. And they had, of course, totally fictional holidays too. We touched on this a little bit with like GTA Online with the snow effects in there and how it's basically just a white coat of paint on the road. Have you guys ever really experienced any sort of positive or negative effects from seasonal weather in games. Banjo-Kazooie has an entire level built around changing seasons, Mm -hmm. which I believe is called Click Clack Woods. The level has four seasons built into it, and so you can progress during summer, fall, winter. But they also have season switches, so you can hit, find the season switch and hit it and change the season in the level. And Mm -hmm. then, for example, there's like a tree house that you can climb and find collectibles in. And if you, you know, if it's the wrong season, it can be really hard to access. Mm -hmm. But if you switch the season to summer, all of a sudden you can climb the treehouse and access it and get the collectibles really easily. Mm -hmm. So it was really about experimenting and seeing how each portion of the level changes based on the seasons. Rare is on record and saying this is the most difficult thing they've ever designed in their entire career. But, I mean, it's incredible. And I think Ranger Kazooie probably remains one of the best, if not Mm -hmm. the best, 3D platformers of all time. Hmm. Mafia 2, you know, when it snowed in that game, it drastically altered the way that you would drive. Roads are slick. You know, snow is a definite factor. You don't really come across snow that often in current open world games, especially ones that have driving mechanics in it. People were kind of excited that GTA 5 looked like it had something like that, and it did, but it was just like the opening level that was a small map completely devoid of the rest of the game. The the old Need for Speed games did a lot of stuff with weather, too. Is that right? With, you know, rain and snow affecting the uh, traction on the road. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, this was back in the 90s, and so it was super innovative for its mm-hmm. time. And people were like, whoa, I can, you know, play this track, and it's raining, and it's all of a sudden slick. And Yeah, some games you come across where it's more difficult to walk through the snow, uh, and there's actually depths to the amount of snow that's built up, making it harder or easier to traverse through. The oldest game I was able to find with changing weather effects was Robot Tank on the Atari 2600, which came out in 1983. That's a lot earlier than I would have guessed. I played that. I actually played that a lot as a kid. And um, you would drive around in a tank and try to shoot other tanks. And there was a lot of stuff it actually did that was pretty innovative for its time. And you would all of a sudden be driving and it would be like fog alert would flash on the screen and it would get really foggy or it would be like snow alert and mm-hmm. it would get really snowy. One of the the other things that it might have been the first game to do was positional damage. And so depending on where your tank took damage, like you could damage the track of your tank and then he would go slower or you would damage the, uh, you know, your your gun, and it would start to malfunction and mm-hmm. stuff. And mm-hmm. it was a really, a really interesting game. Mm-hmm. But I would say uh, holidays and seasonal content in general tend to fall into three categories. One is uh, using seasons and weather to alter strategy. Mm-hmm. The second would be purely aesthetic changes like in Fallout 4. Yep. And then the third would be collectible based mm-hmm. where collectibles alter, which is what really Animal Crossing is built around is mm-hmm. seasonal collectibles. Do you think that there are certain types of game genres that specifically lend themselves better 
to seasonal I mean, content. Anything or whether... strategic, survival, mm-hmm. absolutely. Right. Uh, any survival game is like, really going to be stronger. Don't starve. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, don't starve is fantastic, and it's really about doing hardcore preparation and making sure you survive the seasons. I will say, summer and don't starve is the fucking worst because there's a natural progression there. Right. Right. Okay. Because once you've been through a few winters and have died a few times in winter, it's like, I I can survive this time. I can figure out what I need to do in fall in order to survive winter. Mm-hmm. Summer, like, the only thing I've figured out to do in summer is build uh, lean-tos and sleep through the entire summer. <laughs> and all of my shit burns down. Mm-hmm. Um, so you go into hibernation mode. Yeah, I just, like, sleep all day. You put a bunch of nuts in your mouth, <laughs> and you can sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Again, hoping that's a euphemism. <laughs> right. I stock up stock up on food yeah. and then, you know, sleep all day in the in the siesta lean to or whatever it's called, and then eat and then sleep all night and then, you know, rinse repeat. And mm-hmm. then my shit's gonna all burn down. All of the stuff I built is going to go away. All of my mm-hmm. trees are gonna burn down, my farms are gonna burn down. Everything's going to burn down, mm-hmm. and once summer's over, I'm going to have to start over. Mm-hmm. And that's that's how I play that game. And I've been through a few summers, but it sucks, and the game just gets miserable. Mm-hmm. Because, like, I don't even mind winter. Like, winter actually has items that you can't get in any other season, so it has a, a payoff. Mm-hmm. And summer doesn't. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I would say they give you way more tools to deal with winter, too. I mean, you know, you get cold damage in the winter, but you can heat up a rock and carry the warm rock, and then you can explore longer because you have the heat off the rock. I mean, the only thing you really get is you can build an ice flingomatic, which is very short use and very complicated to build, Mm -hmm. and there just aren't enough tools to Mm -hmm. help you get deal with the summer versus the winter, and so it's just endurance, Mm -hmm. and that's a lot less fun for me. Well, it's, it's... it's, it's endurance plus it's, you know, the whole game is about building up and and uh, preparing. And in the summer, all the shit you've been building up for, for you know, three entire seasons is going to go away. Mm-hmm. You're going to lose everything unless you can get your ice fling built mm-hmm. in time. And those are limited use and they require gears which are very difficult to acquire mm-hmm. and aren't a renewable resource. And so you're you're putting a non-renewable resource into a very short-term use item and it, it like the payoff just isn't there. Mm-hmm. And so now hearing you just describe this, to me, and, and perhaps you agree based on what you've kind of been going through, is that in-game content like uh, seasonal weather effects and, and, and holiday gimmicks sort of have a larger payoff based on internal game time as opposed to like the clock on your ps4 which you know some like batman arkham you know the calendar man gives you different messages based on the 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 date of the ps4 right or the ps3 so you can just kind of mess with the clock and get these spam them you know there sort of seems to be i think a little bit more uh value i guess you could say to the content as it occurs on the game's sort of schedule well the the i mean like animal crossing Mm -hmm. operates on the the system's internal clock okay and it happens in real time so if if you're playing animal crossing at night it's going to be night if you're playing during the day it'll be day if Mm -hmm. you're playing in the winter it'll be winter Mm -hmm. like if you're playing actually on christmas it will be christmas in the game and and stuff like that but so you could just change the clock yeah it's called time traveling oh yeah i mean characters will call you out for being a time traveler oh is that right yeah (laughs) You're, it's really designed to be played for maybe 15 minutes a day, hmm. almost every day. Hmm. And I can't play it that way, so I play it a lot for a short period of time, and then I stop. And so I miss a ton of the content in the game. Right. And, you know, like the last one came out uh, during the summer, so I saw summer and fall content, and then I stopped. I didn't mm-hmm. see a lot of the winter content. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I'll remember to log in, but it, it makes me sad to see my town in disarray, so I never want to just log back in on Christmas and see yeah. all, all my villages you're sad because they don't come around anymore yeah i got i got the last animal crossing right right before thanksgiving and so i got to play all of the holiday content and Mm -hmm. then once the holidays were over i kind of just got bored with it but see it was super exciting to me when you had tweeted out those pictures of fallout 4 it's like whoa you know like where am i in the end game time and then you come across it and you see it and then you start to wonder like what else is there 
And it's kind of a, 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 a small way to sort of invest you a little bit more into awareness of the game. Right. Because uh, I've been almost completely ignoring the mm-hmm. Indian clock before then. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that there was Halloween. I must have, if it's in there, I must have completely. Well, you you it. start out uh, in October, uh, October twenty third, uh, right? And so, uh, so Halloween happens are, right away in the, the game. But they're right that you would find right. it, right? And so you'll probably, when you get to your second year, you might end up. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. I'm wondering, is there a New Year's thing? I hope so. I, I might be past New Year's in my file. Now. I'm like right before New Year's. Year. I was gonna, I was gonna try to uh, experiment with it, but then I um, got sick and got distracted with Rune Factory. Mm-hmm. I, I sleep a lot in the game, but because sometimes I don't want to wait for stuff. If somebody's like, "Come back in a week," and then mm-hmm. I just sleep a week, is so. My in-game clock is actually pretty far. Mm-hmm. Now, Reverend, you're probably more of an expert on um, seasonal mods. Uh, yeah, with, with like Skyrim, there's the uh, wet and cold holidays. Mm-hmm. Wet and cold is uh, one of the more well-known Skyrim mods. Uh, and so then there's a add-on to the base mod of wet and cold, wet and cold holidays, which adds a bunch of holidays uh, to, to Skyrim. But there's one particular holiday, actually, that's, uh, that, that it adds that's a little weird. Uh, so they call it Jester's Day. Mm-hmm. NPCs will randomly have Jester's hats on and will decide to just follow other characters up to and including you and just, like, dance. <laughs> So, you know, like Uthgard the Unbroken, uh, the, the warrior woman at the Bannered Mare in Whiterun, just followed me around for as long as I was in Whiterun with a jester's hat. And any time I would stop walking, she would just start dancing. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? What is my world at this point? Yeah, that reminds me of... Um the poor people in um, Assassin's Creed. A coin, sir. Please, a coin, sir. It's like, get the fuck away from me. <laughs> yeah, it, but in this case, there wasn't even the excuse that she needed money. It's yeah. just, they, and they follow you into your house. Mm-hmm. It sounds like MMO players. Like. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any franchises that you guys would like to see uh, mix it up? What's Atelier. Atelier. A- Atelier is not a very popular series. Mm-hmm. It's um, it's a series in which you play as an alchemist. Mm-hmm. Atelier is divided into trilogies, and each I'm trilogy. With the titles. So there was Atelier Iris, which was more like a traditional JRPG, and you yep. play as an alchemist and go out on missions. And then there was like the uh, Arlen trilogy, where it was really mission based, and you had to use alchemy me to revitalize the world Mm -hmm. but the thing is you go and you gather items and you craft stuff and the battles are really based around the items you craft so you could do a boss fight and it could be impossible and then you could go and craft really good items and you could finish it in five seconds because you can get belts that refill give you a thousand health every second if you get good enough at crafting (laughs) in the game and see if that had seasons and like exploring areas was different based on seasons and you could only get certain items during certain seasons like it would add so much more strategy to the mm-hmm. game i think it would be fascinating but they're super low budget games mm-hmm. and they're not super popular and i think they're probably also worried about making items inaccessible and frustrating people who just want to craft some basic stuff they're, yeah. they're, there are a lot of balancing issues for something that's completely dependent on crafting and adding in mm. season okay. limited content but okay. i'd still love to see it i was playing rune factory the other day and the transition from summer to fall the first day of fall is the mask festival and you have to craft a mask and just wear it all day and mm-hmm. that's like the point of the festival and because the calendar switched over like i hadn't been paying attention to the the next month's calendar and i didn't know it was coming until the night before and my crafting was really low and I wasn't skilled enough to craft any of the masks. So I was like walking around in the game and everyone I tried to talk to would be like, where's your mask? <laughs> and I got so frustrated. It was like 11 in the morning and I just went back to bed. <laughs> like slept through the rest of the day. Yeah. I would like to see some of the more open world games, you know, the the Bethesda games, Mm -hmm. for example, Skyrim, Fallout, those would actually really benefit from more seasonal changes. Mm -hmm. You know, like there's a cavern that gets covered up with snow during the winter months. Mm -hmm. So and, you know, it doesn't melt until the summer months. So this dungeon is only accessible during the summer because if you or the early fall. Because if you wait until the snowfall comes, 
that gets completely covered up and you can't get in there. Yeah. Or you have to be a fire mage with a certain level fire spell to melt the, the ice, you know, covering or whatever. Yeah. But to touch on that, I'd say I'm a little disappointed having played Bully um, that they haven't implemented that sort of a thing into the larger franchises like Grand Theft Auto. That'd be awesome because, you know, in, in, in Mafia 2... You know, when it's winter, you see people walking around with gifts like they were shopping. Right. Which I thought was a really nice touch. It would be fun in GTA to, to know, just beat, beat them up and, and steal yeah. gifts. There was right. some game, I can't remember which one it was, but people actually slip on ice on the sidewalk. I thought that was a really nice touch. But I will say this. Geralt in a Santa Claus suit? Come on. What a hottie. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> 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 uh, Hitman 2016 is going to have some snow stuff in it, right? Because I've watched that trailer more than I once. I believe so. You could actually, there was a, a level in Hitman, gosh, I want to say Contracts for Blood Money, where it was at a Christmas party, like a Playboy style party in a penthouse. And I think you could disguise yourself as Santa Claus. Yeah, so like stuff like that's really, anything that uses seasons and time of year for mm-hmm. strategy is really appealing to me. Because yeah. strategy is really one of my favorite elements of video games in general. And so I like having that layer added mm-hmm. on to my options. Mm-hmm. Now, you played The Sims in, in Sim City, is that correct? Uh, I've played every Sim games, even the terrible Sims 4. Do they do seasonal content? There? They have seasonal content, but it's not implemented in that fun of a way. Mm-hmm. It's You didn't have a season's uh, expansion until, I believe, The Sims 2. Oh, an expansion. And so you had to use an expansion to add seasons into the game. And mm-hmm. even then, a lot of holiday content was more you can decorate your house for Christmas when you want to, which mm-hmm. works for what The Sims is, but it's not not super fun for me yeah. that's the kind of the sims gimmick is like you want to do something super cool buy an expansion yeah that's true you know what would be cool is if you could decorate um your settlements in fallout 4 with like yeah see i would love that i yeah. mean and you can i have kitten paintings everywhere right, in I mean, my it's, house it's, in Devon if you want to string up some christmas lights or something yeah I think that would be cool because it seems like you can place a lot of things that exist in the world. Right. Um, as decorations or, or whatever. Yeah, but. I mean, that's what I was trying to figure out, was if I could steal that Christmas tree and grab mm. it and, like, move it to my little rooftop area in my, in my home base. full grinch on them, huh? Well, I mean, it would have looked cool. And then I could have gotten some chairs, sat out there with my BFF, Nick Valentine. We would have <laughs> had a good time, drink some coffee. I will say that there is a plant that resembles the Nirn root in Fallout 4. I really like the idea. Yeah. They talk about it in a way that leads you to believe that it is a near root. Yeah, I, no, there's definitely an implication that the Elder Scrolls universe and the Fallout universe mm-hmm. are the same universe. It, right. Like, I really like the I, the implication I've heard, the, the fan theories, whatever, is that uh, the Elder Scrolls universe is actually the really far future right. of the Fallout universe. And I, I, like, that just amuses the shit out of me. That is quite amusing. I've taken to collecting toys in Fallout 4. Yeah, I do too. Oh, I like yeah. the little alien toys. They're so yeah, cute. I've got a bunch and of them. They don't the, Stand the creepy, up right. The creepy monkeys. It's so hard to set stuff up right. It and is. then I spent a long time sitting at my desk and like I had files and a cup of coffee and a mm-hmm. typewriter magnifying glass. And then I came back to my home base once and everything was on the floor. Oh. It was so bad. It was I don't Piper. Know who, it probably was <laughs> Piper. Piper. <laughs> Freaking Piper ruins everything. Her stupid newspaper. <laughs> And her Stupid stories Piper. about noodle conspiracies. Piper's just the worst. No Christmas for her. <laughs> no Christmas for Piper. I, I make Piper hang out in, in my settlement that nobody is at. <laughs> <laughs> Like, because I only really spent time developing one settlement, you know, Sanctuary Hills, and everybody's there except Piper. She's a a settlement all by herself with, like, one other person. (laughs) So I think uh, the consensus within the group is that uh, seasonal content is a positive addition to games. Whether it's kind of built in or even if it's some expansion that they're, you know, nickel and diming you for, but, uh, or a mod, you know? Sometimes they don't put it in there and some guy says, no, I want it in there. Boom, mod. There you go. I think it's a nice change of pace that isn't necessarily just like, here's an ice level or here's a wind level. You know, it's kind of like an interesting way to sort of see the world through a different lens, I guess you could say. Would I like there to be snow in Fall of Four? Of course. But there's snow in The Witcher 3, so if I want, if I need my snow fix, I'll just go there. Going forward, I would like to see more of this, um, especially as hardware has improved and there's room to sort of start just adding uh, miscellaneous content. But, uh, you know, I don't develop games. I only play them. And for that, I thank the Lord. Tis the season to do so. <laughs> 
thanking the Lord. Whoever that Lord is, it could be Geralt. Could be Tracy Lords, the porn star. Yes. Well, she's reformed. That's what I've heard. But, uh, so, hey, you know what? Thanks for joining us. Um, hopefully you've got your fill. Um, there's plenty of gravy left over, so go ahead and help yourself to that. Jump on the train. Unwrap some gifts. Have a good holiday. Peace to the world. I got biscuits in my mouth. Okay? I got biscuit mouth. It's a hereditary <laughs> disease. That... I was I was really hoping it was another euphemism, honestly. <laughs> oh. I, 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 I don't think I can make it any more clear. I really want to have sex with Julian. Yeah. Yeah, there's a line for me for that. But... I, I, no, I understand. You yeah. are a sexy man. It's, it's that time of year, right? <laughs> it only happens at this time of the year, Most folks. Most wonderful okay? time. <laughs>